I have a brother who lives as a white man. He is the principal of Cedarbrook Elementary School in Bakersfield, California. He has a wife, a son, and a daughter. I have not met him. I have not met them. If my brother were here today, he would politely deny our kinship. I understand. It takes two men to make a brother. I have a brother serving five years in Atmore State Penitentiary. Even as a child, he took things that didn't belong to him. He is scheduled for release on January 21, 2024. No one will be there to welcome him. He is a thief, a career criminal, and I, despite a log in my eye, can see the speck in his. I have a brother who was the pastor of Mount Olive Baptist Church in Pittsburgh, the second largest black church in Pennsylvania. He was the most powerful public speaker I've heard. It was like listening to Moses. His voice booming, arms flailing, he would preach until his shirt was drenched with sweat. But before the shirt was dry, he would have some young sister spinning in the back seat of his BMW. One day he left that big church and started a ministry for the homeless and those afflicted with AIDS. A newspaper reporter asked why he'd left Mount Olive, and he answered, I got saved. Today he lives as much as is humanly possible, a life devoid of even a hint of hypocrisy. A year ago, a thought came into my head and took residence. Forgive the likely hyperbole, but this thought tortured me, ripped me. It was not an original thought, nor was it especially profound. It wouldn't go away. It wouldn't leave me alone. I tried to not think the thought, which of course cemented it in my mind, this thought that tortured me. Five words, five simple words. It seems so melodramatic, so silly to say that one was tortured by a thought but I was. I remember when the thought came. I was delivering a lecture at a conference in Indiana, and I said something, the thought, and the audience applauded. I am a professor, meaning I like applause and rarely get it, so I said it again. This time the audience stood, clapped, some even cheered. On the return drive to Michigan, those five words came back to me, and I, like my brother, felt like a charlatan. The five words were these, every man is my brother. I've never believed that, and again, I don't know why I said it that first time. Why did anyone say anything? I have certainly lied before white ones, black ones, big ones, ones not so big. It was a lie because I didn't believe it, yet I had said it twice. I thought, what's the big deal? People say things, orators say things. It sounded good, it worked. What's the harm? No one will remember. Maybe I didn't really say it, people misspeak. There is a hypocrite hugging my children. Professors say things. It sounded good. What's the harm? I thought those things. But it did matter, and later it mattered more. It's so corny to say every man is my brother. It sounds like something you'd read in Mother Jones magazine, or maybe even Reader's Digest. I've always felt a kinship with men of color especially brown ones. I like it when we say, yo, what's up, brother? Or, what's happening, brother? Or, true that, brother? A shared history of oppression will make you call a stranger brother or brother. But even in those cases, it was purely symbolic. I didn't think we were actually brothers. 
Weeks and months passed and I couldn't get the thought out of my head. One day I was in the Jim Crow Museum and I saw a postcard with a black man being publicly whipped. I've seen that postcard many times. After all, I bought it. I put it in the cabinet and it's in my presentations. I looked at that man being beaten and I thought my brother was being beaten publicly, naked to the waist, beaten like a dog, worse than a dog. At that moment, I felt in a way that I can't describe that he was indeed my brother, not my symbolic brother, no, a real brother. I wanted to run to him, rip him from the post and beat his tormentors. I wanted to hold him, hold his head to my chest and tell him that his brother, this brother cared for him and had come to rescue him. My God, he really was my brother. Later, I tried to talk to some people about it, but most folk won't go with you when you're tripping. Sometimes when I went to the museum, I would not look at that postcard. Sometimes it was all I looked at. One day I looked and in the postcard I saw a little white boy. He was standing near my beaten brother. And that little boy, he was not laughing, not protesting either, just standing there near the white man with the whip. And I looked at that child and it hit me like a heel to the face. That little boy was also my brother, and I thought, no, no, I don't want this. He hates me before he knows the fifth grade. I want to cuss him and the woman who made him. His brother is the white man with the whip. My brother is the black man being beaten. How can that child be my brother? I don't want this. And then I understood the thought that tortured me. It wasn't only or even primarily that I had said something in a public lecture that I didn't believe. I've done that too many times for that to torture me. No, the real torture was the realization that maybe, just maybe, all men are my brothers, and I didn't want that. I tried to dismiss those five words as a hollow religious slogan, liberal tripe, mawkish muck from the mouths of idealistic zealots. Why? Because if that little boy was my brother, then so was the white man with the whip. My heart said, he's not my brother, he's a monster. I don't hate the whip, I hate him. I don't hate what he stands for, I hate him. I wanna make him feel the whip, strip him naked, beat him till my arm is tired and beat him like he is not a child of God. Put his naked white back on a postcard. If he's my brother, then so was every slaveholder who raped a girl or boy. I don't want that. That's too much. Every overseer, every lecher, every foot on a neck. I don't want this. Every man is my brother. It changes nothing. And from that deepest place came one last yowl. No, no, no. My Uncle Sonny looks like the black man who was being beaten. And that little white boy who stood and watched looks like my son, Jamie. Every man is my brother. It doesn't matter if I want it or not. In a moment, the idle thought became a truth. A matter of fact truth, absolute. I am the only male born from my mother's womb, but every man is my brother. White elementary school principals who deny me, prisoners who rob, preachers who leave big churches to help the helpless, every man. This kinship is not based on shared wombs, common ancestors, similar skin, communal beliefs, or brotherly love. We are brothers because we spring from the same fountain and that water flows one way. I can hate a man, but he is still my brother. I admired Dr. King and detested James Earl Ray, but they were both my brothers. We don't choose our brothers. 
George Bush is my brother, and so is the man who made his breakfast this morning. And Stevie Wonder, who cannot see, and David Duke, who chooses not to. And Leonard Peltier, and the men he killed or didn't kill. And Reverend Pat Robertson, and his white sons. And Minister Farrakhan, and his black sons. And Bill Gates, who has more money than the devil. And Eminem, always bitter. And brothers who cry, and brothers who need to cry. And the men who crashed airplanes into the Twin Towers were my brothers, and they killed my brothers. And pimps are my brothers too, and date rapists, and punks, and brothers slinging dope, and Dylan Roof, a young man robbed of the truth, and Donald Trump who believes he is the truth, and moonshiners, and revenues, and Jerry Springer who brings me down, and Stephen Hawking who lifts me, and brothers who live as white men, and brothers who live as black men, and brothers who live as red men, and brothers who don't want to live, but none are niggas, kikes, crackers, wops, chinks, or fags, because God didn't make any of those. And the men in Abu Ghraib photographs are my brothers, and so are the men who behead the helpless. And Jared Fogel is my brother, and so is Bill Cosby and Cain, and Abel, and Hawks, and Doves, and those who sleep in urine-stained hallways, and malicious talkers, and John Stewart, and Bill O'Reilly, and the men who carry their bags, and capitalists, and communists, and some are beautiful, and some disfigured. Some run, some sit always in iron chairs, and villages. Some are strangers, but none are alien and brothers with tender hearts and wicked brothers and weak ones like me. O.J. Simpson is my brother and so is the father of Nicole Simpson. I've got brothers I want to hit and brothers I want to hold and some who hate me and some who hate you. And some of my brothers are old, some poor, some ugly, some with whips and strong right arms. Every day is a family reunion because every man, every good man and every bad one Every man born of a woman is my brother, and to know this changes nothing, changes everything. My son is Eustace Jameson Pilgrim. After his fifth birthday, I asked him, how do you like being five? He said he liked being five because the number five was cute. He is my son, he is my little brother. One day he said to me, I don't love you. He saw my frown. He smiled and said, Dad, it's opposite day. I said, oh, then I don't love you either. My son is my brother. And that changes everything. A reshuffling of the cards. And he is the man with the whip. Or the man being beaten. Either way, my brother my little brother. Today I will hold his head to my chest. He is my son. He is my brother. And I am his keeper. A new thought has entered my head and taken residence. It is not an original thought, nor is it especially profound. I will not let it torture me. It is a simple thought, and it is this. Every woman is my sister.